It's great to be with you all here this morning. <clears throat> As I was getting ready for the um, 8 o'clock Mass at uh, St. Pius, the parish that I'm assigned to, the sacristan, uh, his name is also Carlos, he called me and he said, hey, Father Carlos, this is Carlos, and I, there is a gentleman who is obviously doesn't have a house, and he's sleeping on the little breezeway between the office and the church. And so he's like, well, what do I do? So I was like, I mean, I don't know. Uh, so I, I texted Father Paul uh, Hesse, the pastor, and I said, Father Paul, Carlos just uh, called me, said that there's a, a gentleman who's asleep in between the, the office and the, the church. And so and there's like a, an entrance to the church there, and people use that. That's one of the main entrances. And so I was like, what should I do? And I was hoping he was going to say, don't worry about it, Father Carlos. Just keep drinking your coffee. I'll go deal with it. It's going to be fine. But he said, instead, what he said was, go and um, ask him to leave. Keep your distance. Here's the non-emergency number to the police in case you need something. <laughs> let me know how it goes and so i said well oh gosh i don't know how i'm going to do this uh, so i went and i got a kind of to-go cup and i put some coffee in it and i said you know good you know good morning sir uh, you know you really can't stay here but here's some coffee and i know you're just trying to get out of the rain and he was very gracious and and then he you know he proceeded to leave and i um the reason i say this is because it sort of it was kind of interesting that it happened this morning it was very fitting as part of me was like, I mean, it was raining pretty hard over there, and, and nobody wants to be stuck out in the rain. But at the same time, the people needed to be safe, and I, none of us really knew who this gentleman was. And so, we, you know, for the safety of the people entering the, uh, the church, we had to ask him to leave. But my heart was sort of torn between the two things, because on the one hand, I wasn't just trying to be mean to this guy, because he, you know, he was just trying to stay dry, as we all are today. And the other thing was I wanted to keep help keep the people safe. And I think this is very telling about the gospel today. In the gospel, Jesus says that he doesn't come to bring peace and to bring division. And when I first read this, I was like, I was kind of shocked because I was like, this, this is kind of weird that Jesus would say this because like on the one hand, you have Jesus who is in the, go the gospels call him the Prince of Peace. And then you also have in the gospel of John, he has the famous prayer, Father, may they all be one. And so, as I'm reading this, I'm thinking, how can, how can the Lord, on the one hand, say, I'm here to bring peace, and I'm the Prince of Peace, and Father, may they all be one, as you and I are one. And then on the other side, he's talking about setting father-in-laws against, or daughter-in-laws against mother-in-laws, sons against fathers, sisters, or daughters against mothers. How can you have these two things at the same time? It can almost seem like Jesus is contradicting himself because these are very different aspects of his ministry that he's talking about. But Jesus is, in fact, bringing unity, and this is the goal. And he, you know, he asks of us that we preach the truth as the means or the way to peace. And sometimes this truth creates division, you know. When we bring light to something that our neighbor is doing that's perhaps wrong or against our faith, and we bring that to light, you know, with them in an appropriate way, of course, Sometimes that creates division. That creates tension. And perhaps many of you have experienced this with your own families or friends or even coworkers or people you're close with. But the, the division that the Lord brings today is not a permanent division. It's a means by which he brings about peace and unity. The peace and unity that come from being in union with him. The real, true source of union and peace. So that's sort of like the external part of it. But kind of going back to the story I told you at the beginning, there's also an internal dimension in our hearts. Because our hearts are sort of divided into different pieces. And, there's, and this division needs healing in all of us. And maybe, maybe you've said, part of me, maybe you've heard yourself say, you know, part of me really wants this and this in my life, whether it's a thing or a person or a you know, relationship or what have you, a state in life. But the other part of me doesn't really want that for its own set of reasons. 
Let me give you an example. You know, as football season rolls around every year, <clears throat> perhaps part of I already hear laughing in the audience. Part of me wants to root for the Dallas Cowboys. You know, that's the, that's the team. But then another me, another part of me wants to root for a team that's actually going to win the Super Bowl. know how that one was going to go over <laughs> and so I mean that's sort of a comic example but this becomes more serious when we say to ourselves you know part of me really wants to live for Jesus and live you know from the altar and for the altar but another part of me really wants to keep living the same life with the same sins living like I didn't even go to mass on Sunday when I did you know, maybe, maybe for you, it's part of me wants to love Jesus with all my heart. Part of my heart wants to love Jesus, but another part of me wants to keep looking at people lustfully. Or maybe for you, it's part of me wants to love Jesus, but another part of me wants to keep holding that grudge against my relative or my coworker or my friend. Or maybe part of me wants to love Jesus, but another part of me wants to keep neglecting verbally telling my children or my spouse or my parents or whoever that I love them because I'm afraid. Brothers and sisters, love is very important to show in actions. It's also very important to show with words. And part of me, or maybe for you, it's part of me wants to love Jesus, but another part of me, another part of my heart is scared. And another part of my heart wants to keep looking the other way when something immoral is going on at work, at home, with my friends or family. And brothers and sisters, when we allow the truth of the gospel to penetrate our hearts, it can create a lot of tension and division. And this, I think, is perhaps one of the best and deepest ways to understand the gospel. Because on the one hand, our heart wants to love the Lord. But on the other hand, we want to love our sins and hold on to those because they bring comfort, or they bring pleasure, or they sort of try to numb our fears. And when we hear the gospel that Jesus offers to us today, he's saying, I want there to be a tension between these two things. I don't want you to be at peace with that. I don't want you to feel at peace with coming to Mass every Sunday and then living like nothing has changed he, do, he doesn't want peace there. He wants division. He wants worry. He wants strife. He wants to shake this up so that we cannot continue living this sort of not even status quo. He wants us to look in our hearts and look into the, the divided parts of our hearts and say, wait, hold, hold on. I can't keep living like this on Sunday for this one hour and the rest of the week be a different person. I want to desire Jesus with my whole heart and my whole soul. And that is the unity that Jesus wants to bring through this division. Yes, it's through sort of the pain and, and, and anguish and conflict and tension between these two parts of our hearts that are battling it out. It is through that, that division, that G Jesus brings union. Union with ourselves and also union with him. And so, what does this mean kind of practically for everybody? Because this is sort of a lot of theoretical stuff. The first thing is to pray. Pray something. And the second thing is to do something. So to pray something. I would encourage all of us to pray, Lord, show me where my heart is divided. And let me in so that you can heal me. And the second thing is to do something. So this might, these are just some ideas that might or might not apply to you. You know, if, if part of your heart is really, you know, wanting to be with the Lord, but the other part is struggling with lust and looking at other people lustfully, maybe change the channel. If part of you is nursing a grudge, maybe do a small act of kindness for the person you're holding a grudge against. Or maybe if you really struggle to tell your loved ones that you indeed love them, then with your words, verbally tell your children or your spouse or your parents or your friends or whoever that you love them. 
or maybe if you struggle to turn a blind eye to something that's going wrong, something that's immoral at work or in any aspect of your life, then turn your eyes and see the reality that's there and address it, brothers and sisters. And these are really challenging things to do. They're really challenging because at least half of us wants to not do them because it's uncomfortable, it's painful. There's a lot of suffering involved. But it's only when we go through this division, this pain and this tension that the Lord will bring union and peace to our hearts. So brothers and sisters, it's my prayer that we may all experience very seriously the internal pain pain of having a divided heart so that we can experience the joy and the wholeness and the union that we have only in the love of Christ. And only when we come to this altar to receive the Eucharist and when we live from this Eucharist. And it's my prayer that Jesus, at the end of our days, will come to us and say, my dearly beloved son, my dearly beloved daughter, I recognized your heart because I saw that it was ablaze. <laughs>